we're hiking up to the mine now and I've come across this tree that came down over the winter pretty beefy trees you can see up there but the most interesting thing about this for us is you can see it's impaled itself on the ground here and uh, shoved up all this dirt in what was a very solid road which is I can't even imagine the force it would have taken to smash into the ground like that you can see it spill down the uh, hillside here a bit which is interesting but uh yeah. Oh yeah, the scale. There we go. There's somebody next to it. it goes up a ways. It does. I just That is a tall tree. The force it would have taken to do this is just insane to me. It's a hard packed road. Exactly, it's hard packed road. Those are words I was looking for. Hard packed gravel. Impressive. You start seeing stuff like that, you know you're near a mine. And uh sure enough, here we are arriving at the mine. I see an adit on the left there already, and some buildings up here. Huh. Old school lawnmower right there. That's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, there's an adit there, some kind of tank there. I'll take a closer look. Uh, building and equipment here. Uh, I see track running out this way, and Dropping off the edge here. Eh, moderately sized waste rock pile. Just looking at the stuff on the ground here. Usually you guys are better at spotting this kind of stuff than I am because I'm just kind of trying to pay attention to everything else going on and you guys are able to focus more on what's actually here. So all too often you guys spot a bunch of stuff that I just completely overlooked. My buddy went ahead, that's him up there. A bunch of ventilation pipes right here. Old equipment. That's good stuff. Factor's plate on that. Curtis St. Louis. Curtis compressor, old school compressor right here. I thought that looked like a compressor, but I didn't want to look stupid and say it was if it wasn't. Alex had a bunch of stuff went down the hill down there too. Converted wood stove, I believe. Ah, uh, see, it looks like there's a generator over there. Go check that out. It's nice to have all this equipment here. Don't worry, we'll go in the attic. I just wanted to get this stuff outside before I shoot up in the waders and everything. Oh, yeah. Hercules. We need to Hercules powder, not Hercules power. I've got a blower right here. See the uh, airlines going out. Ventilation. There's a view of the blower. This, uh, this is newer here. Cement mixer. Mines always seem to have that for some reason. And tank right there, riveted. First look inside. Looks like Chicago Nomadic Tool Company. There's a lot going on in here. Bunch of stuff inside. Just trying to make sure I don't miss stuff, but I'm sure I am missing stuff. Oil gauge. There's the Chicago Pneumatic Tool Company stamp. We've got a bunch of parts on the ground over here. Looks like car parts and all kinds of stuff. This stuff's been here a while. Windows are smashed out, unfortunately. This building we just checked out. I noticed there was a bunch of uh, metal and such piled up out here. 
I already found a few cool things. This yeah. Is a component to an older style of drill where you have to crank it. Not the uh, pneumatic ones that I've run into in most mines. That's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, that is a huge impeller of sorts. I have no idea what it goes to, but it's. I mean, that is huge, yeah. A little scale. Yeah. It's well used. I can't imagine what that's but, for. Uh, if you just stare into this pile, you'll start to recognize equipment or at least pieces of equipment. That's some drill, drill bent, steel, drill bit. Bent bit. Looks like it's snapped, bent and snapped, and it'll be a hard piece of rock. Pretty impressed with this drill. You don't see this very often at all. This is nice. This is very, very rusted. Um, it's one of the oldest looking pieces of metal here. Very interesting. Uh, transmission over here. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, the more I look at it, the more I see yeah. stuff. Look at a bunch of rail back there. Yeah, this is a concrete platform. It's kind of hard to tell, but it juts out. There's an edge right oh, there. Oh, okay. I just I missed that. Yeah, and it drops down maybe 30 feet, but you're going to have to shimmy down this hill to see it. Huh. But uh, it's worth seeing. Bunch of stuff here, too. Looks like a, either a, a water pressure tank for the shower on the opposite side of the wall, or maybe a water heater. Yeah. That's the building where we were just uh, poking around, and that pile of all that metal is up there. And uh, come down here, and there's a lot of stuff down here that makes us believe this is a former mill building. I mean, there's this huge concrete foundation here. You've got those footings right there, which is way more than you'd need for that little shack. And then also, if you look down here, you can see that uh, the concrete foundations extend down the hill here. And then there's a, another landing down there. So my guess would be that this is a, quite an old mill site. My buddy just noticed a uh, powder box in the brush. He's hauled out. It looks like it's a newer powder box because it doesn't have the dovetails. It's got round nails holding it together. Yeah. And the wire I'm thinking is factory original just to give it some strength. 45% strength, usually I see 30%. Hercules. Hercules powder, 50 pounds. There's their nice logo. Pretty good shape, you're sitting outside on the ground. Yeah, seriously, especially in this kind of environment. Yeah. That's pretty cool. This is weird. Yeah, I noticed that, I was curious about that. I wonder if this was a... Repurposed or something. Box. Yeah, I wonder if it was repurposed. Yeah, you know what, this could have originally been a dovetail, they just could have cut it and I can't, actually it might be a little smaller than a standard. Interesting. Yeah, it is. It's kind of hard to tell through the brush, but that's that, that shack we checked out before. I'm at the next lower level down, and uh, you can see the foundation just extends down the hill here. There's a bunch of sheet metal and stuff here, and then that just uh, extends all the way down the hill. There's uh, sheet metal and scraps of equipment and such running all the way down there. So somebody could have a field day here if they wanted to. I noticed the uh, old canteen here, which I thought was kind of cool. And uh, maybe a carbide can there. And this is all waste rock right there from that adit. And speaking of adits, let's go check that adit out. We have the workshop to my right and all of the equipment. And of course we have this nice looking at it, which is dry, at least from what I can see here, which I really appreciate. Old tank there. Let's go check out this dry at it. Of course, the fact it's dry may mean that it's not that big, but I'm gonna be an optimist. See the rail stacked up there on the left. That's a good sign because we didn't have rail like this, it didn't go back very far. Huh. It does go back, but I see a big jumble of wood. Ventilation pipe on the right. Big jumble of wood, I think I can get through that. Bunch of good mineralization here. You see these moths gathered there? Pretty cool looking. I don't know my moths that well to tell you what kind that is, but I'll bet somebody in the audience does. 
cap and post timbering, except the caps have disappeared. Well, they haven't disappeared, they're rotted on the ground, but that's what that is. Just stepped in a big pile of mud. There's a fair amount of timbering here. I can see why, because this is busted down. Fairly ugly looking. Actually, this is very ugly looking. Look at that slab right there about to drop. Just to give one example. And all this on the left about to go as well. It's mildly concerning. I wouldn't want to camp out there. You can see the lagging on the right is the same setup with all the waste rock and such piled behind it. Actually, a lot of this is stuff that's just caved off or sloughed off the ribs. Yeah, some of that's waste. But a lot of that stuff that's sloughed off. Ah, it's hung up, I'm trying to get through. Just keep going, but it still looks bad. So this is what a deteriorating mine looks like. See how rotten all the boards are. Just gonna move on through this section. Some cool formations there. And there's some quartz to the vein. Extends along here. Oh, this is not looking fun at all. That's all caved right there. Looks like there's a winds on the left. A ton of stuff has come down here. I hope I can make it through that. I don't know if I can get through that or not. I'll check. That's... I don't know what that was. Oh, I guess that must have been a, a hoist or something mounted there. Or at least a windlass for this. Winds on the left. Given how muddy the water is, I have no way of telling how deep that is. A lot, of, okay, I guess I can get through that. A lot of material has come down here though. Keeps going back that way. You see all the stuff that's smashed down on top of this. And this whole slab is broken off right here. Can you see that? Can you see that fracture point right there? That's, that's off the rib. That's not waiting to fall, that did fall. And it's just kind of resting on the ground. Same with this one. That's already broken off. Oh man, I was just under this. Look at what I climbed under. That's crazy. This runs down to the winds. I'm really curious about that winds, but I'm not going down that. Even if you had a submersible, that wouldn't do any good because the water's so murky. These crazy formations here. I this I thought this might have been a stope at first, but I don't think this is a stope. I think this all caved, and I'm walking on the caved material here. What I'm trying to say, of course, I'm walking the cave material. What I meant to say is I'm walking on what used to be the top of the attic. Looks bad up there too. There's some more quartz here. See a little bit right there. This isn't really a fat vein or anything though. That's pretty deep there. I was just checking to see if there might be a winds there, but I don't think so. See this is all, I thought they might have picked that out, but I think that's just, cave back there. See, it had some pretty large timbers set up here. And they jammed all those, uh, that's called the lagging. 
I jammed all those boards in there to try and hold back the sides or the ribs of the adit of the miners column. Oh man, is that the face? Let me get over there. Check out the size of these timbers. These are really large. These are all at least 12 to 14 inches across. Very large. You know what, guys? That's the face. That's not a cave in, that is the face. Remember, I told you the quartz thing didn't look that impressive? I think the miners agreed. There's a little bit right there, but it must not have assayed out very well. And you can see how much stuff has crumbled down. They probably didn't like working on this one. I don't really like being on this one either. This one's pretty sketch. Or sporty, as I say. Just admiring the cap and post timbering here. They did a good job of that. And it's interesting to me. See, they don't have a post on the right here. They just balance it off of the, the rock there. Look at those slabs. Look at the size of those slabs that have come down. That's why I just came through. Those are huge. Each one of those is the size of a couch. So they are definitely needed. And they probably had a set like this running through there that failed. You can see the rains of the timbers down the water, but that's what that was. So there's the attic we just finished checking out and we're gonna head up the road now and uh, see what else we might find. It was pointed out to me, that I missed earlier, that the, uh, the frame for this little uh, lean-to or shed here, all made out of rail. It's all ore cart rail, which uh, I thought was pretty cool. So we'll head up now and uh, see what else this site might have. Well, I was right about there being more here because we've just come up a few more feet and we look up and that looks like a bunkhouse up there. Can't wait to go check that out. All along here, I've been pointing out all of it out, but all along here is all kinds of metal and things like that down the hillside. I mean, it's just gotta be a ton of stuff down there. Bunch of water coming out here, which makes me think there's, yep, there's an adit. That's a fair amount of water coming out of the adit, so uh, that might be a decent one. There's the portal there. That looks really cool. There's a portal there, and you've got that, uh, it looks like a bunkhouse, but we'll see for sure in a bit. Um, and then I just see this misty expanse right there. That's really cool. It looks open too. I can't wait to get back to that one. Uh, I think I'll head up and check that out first, and then come back and hit this one, which I'm looking forward to. The portal's right there and I'm following this trail up to what I think goes to the bunkhouse and uh, we saw this old car sort of tossed down the hillside there. So uh, I'm going to Jake's and go check it out. That looks pretty cool though. Hard to tell what vintage that might be but it's an oldie that's for sure. If you find something cool I'll uh, I'll include that in the video. In the meantime, I'll go check out that house. I'm really curious about that. Okay, I'm heading up that trail to the uh, bunkhouse, or what I believe is a bunkhouse now. I should just leave the camera on because there's so much stuff here. I keep seeing stuff. I see some nice uh, quartz samples here. Big pile of wood there. Who knows what that's for? And I'm sure there's more stuff up here. Yeah, wow, look at this. Look at this. Oh wow, that is an awesome old truck. Wow. What a great old flatbed truck. You see the bed, the wooden bed's almost completely rotted away. Nice quartz sample right there actually. See the mineralization there? Anyway, this truck, 
I'm excited about. That is just awesome. Go around front and get a better view of it. It's not easy to get back here, but here's a view of the front of that truck. With, uh, I just noticed an interesting hitch on it here in the front. You see that? Extends out here. It's interesting. Obviously, a uh, aftermarket modification. Here's a look at the uh, front of it. This is really cool. There's the engine. Somebody put plastic over it. I don't know much how different that's going to make now, but. It's a nice thought. Chevrolet. It's an old Chevy. And it might be an old military truck because it says USA right there and it looks like there's a serial number. Looks like an old... I don't know if this is uh, pre-World War II even. I'm not sure. I'm not good with my Chevys. Maybe somebody in the audience will know. I'm sure somebody will know. There's the inside. Looks like the uh, rats have been having a good time here. There's the uh, instrument panel. A view down to the pedals. I'm having a tough time here with the big steering wheel and the awkward position and such. Man, this is this is really cool. This is uh, one of the neatest things I've seen so far here. The view back. I'm really excited about that, uh, that bunkhouse with this much cool stuff here. That's kind of a cool shot. See out to the front grill right there. All right, we made it up to the uh, presumed bunkhouse here. Lost the road actually, and got kind of a, had to be kind of a scramble to get up here, but we did it obviously. You know, even the glass windows are still intact. See that electricity. Right there. Looks like there must have been an upper level there, maybe for storage. And uh, again, that lower at it is just there. You can see there's not a lot between the foundation of this bunkhouse and going over the side. You see it's already sagging right there, so this probably will not be here for too much longer. I'm glad we were able to see this when we can. We'll just let ourselves inside. Got the kitchen here. All kinds of bits and pieces of equipment on it. Sink and running water and electricity. So that's uh, you live pretty well here. Oh man. Awesome old stove right there. Wow. Cannot imagine them bringing that up here. That is unreal. I cannot make out the manufacturer. Maybe somebody at home can. I can't make that out. Really cool find though. From a distance, that looks like the uh, radiation symbol. Okay, okay, there's the view of the upper level there. And then you can see where it's starting to come down through there. And also here. That's that door we saw the other side of a minute ago. And then the, uh, the floorboards, obviously. Not in the best of shape. Cold cupboards. The rats have made good use of the cupboards and drawers. This is really cool. All right. Some sort of living room here. Uh, it's really rotted right there. You see where that's caving in right there. Actually, this is that section we saw from the outside that was option right there so I'm not gonna walk over there. Oh even has a fireplace how cool is that? This is a proper building not some flown together garbage. Full 
on fireplace. I do not see fireplaces very often like this at mines. That is cool. See the rats have been busy. Uh, more rooms here. Some kind of hallway here. Got a little storage nook right here, looks like. And I'm not sure what that is right here, but it's sagging, so I'm not going to walk out there. And this is a really cool screened in little porch right here. That would have been real nice after a long day. Sit out here, protected from the mosquitoes, have a cold beer after a hard day in the mine. That would be nice. Got, okay, here's the bathroom, obviously. So, yeah, definitely had running water. I expect that to be full, but thought I'd check. Okay, leaving the bathroom. I don't know. Oh, there's an old suitcase. Look at that. Huh. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure what this room was entirely. Mystery box here, there's nothing in it. Huh. And a oh, closet. Obviously. A little storage space there. Man, what a really cool bunkhouse or cabin or house, whatever you want to call it. This place is really cool, man. Newspaper lining the walls. Ah. Porcupines have uh, exposed it. Oh, I missed that. Round trip to Los Angeles, 18 bucks on boat. Really? Oh, that is. What a. Thank you for the porcupines, man. That's cool. <laughs> Look at that. Looking at the newspapers and what we know of the mine, what we've seen. Looking like 30s, early 30s. Yeah. I haven't seen a date yet, but just judging from the prices and the look of things. Huh. That is really cool. Are there any more sections? you find any more sections where it's... Uh... No, they're, they're here and there, but... Uh... Okay, fine. Clean them out. Talking about... Here's a date. Oh, it just says January 23rd or 20, uh, 28th. No year, though. Some more over here, it's closed. Picture of a baby. This is also January. I'm hiding the year for me. Yeah, me too. There's a newspaper we were just checking out right there, and uh, there's a fair amount exposed over here, but of course not the date. That's a huge fly right there. Wow. Um, of course not the date exposed. And over there, I'm glad they used the newspaper as insulation. It's interesting to us decades later. We have the house right there, of course, and it's time to go check out this attic beneath the house. Got a rail right in front, which I like to see. Got some water back there, we have the waders on, so it's not a concern. Unless they have leaks in them. But these are new waders, so hopefully they don't. Oh, already out of the water. I like to see that. Just looking around for a vein or anything. I've not seen anything yet. So, oh, there's some quartz already. Yeah. 
this is an older mine and uh, usually they would see something on the surface and just run it back. Didn't have all the modern drilling equipment such that we do now. Got some flowstone maybe up here. A little bit of ground fall right there. This is sort of a dry flowstone. See it's got that marbled look to it. See what I'm saying? Just after winter, you know, when the spring is really warming up and there's a ton of water percolating through, but there's a good amount of water flowing down through there. But it's just barely seeping out right now. See what I mean? You can see it glistening because there's a little bit of water on it. But I guarantee you, in the spring, there's a good amount of water dripping down there. See, like I said, a little bit of ground fall here. I came out of the side there. The rib of the adit, as the miners call it. And you can see it's this flaky, crumbly kind of slate rock. I always see this stuff sloughing off or caving. And like I said, there's more up there. Still the rail here. Underneath my feet. You see the nature of the rock has changed quite a bit. And I've got some orange mineralization and all this slabbed off from there. The attic keeps running back and around the bend there. I can see a timber support right there. And interestingly, I just looked over and saw this. Obviously that a stole, or excuse me, a timber support jammed in there as well. So that's where that, see the, the wood fragments right there? That's where that would have been jammed in on the other side. Obviously they needed it here based on what's in front of me. I just climbed over that mess. You can see more timber supports above me. Obviously, they needed them here based on what we're seeing on the ground. In front of me, there's a much better echo actually. I don't know if that's coming across in the camera, but that's a sign of more solid ground. Slabs starting to come off right there. See what I mean? But there's definitely a better echo in here. Okay, I'm gonna run straight back for a little while. There's something going off to the right, maybe. Ah, right, we got some water here. Oh, okay. Yes, there is something going off to the right, but that's it. That is as far as that goes. So if that was exploratory or they're headed back there and realized they were on the wrong heading, then for whatever reason, they carried on down this direction. Big mineralized slab right there. There. You see the rail here in front of me very clearly. It's getting very drippy back here. Really hope I don't get any water dripping on the microphone. Because that just messes up the video like you wouldn't believe. Bend to the right. Oh wow. It's definitely a mess there. There's something directly to my right. Oh, this might have been an ore shoot or something, but it's just timber support. Obviously stuff was cracking down from the back of the attic there. Ooh, this is ugly. This is all stuff that broke off. Caved in, there's a little bit of quartz up there. 
See the vein right there? It's interesting, everything seems to have broken off of that section. And the vein dips down behind me into the floor of the attic there. But this wasn't a stope, this all just broke off, as you can see in front of me here. The attic continues straight ahead. You see the quartz vein running all along the right there. I'll climb over this and pick up right there. I just climbed over that and I wanted to show you a little closer look at the vein before I continue. Nice looking quartz. And in this section, you can see the iron staining in it. Gold is very common where you see quartz and iron together. As you see here, it's a gold rather than iron horse. See a little bit of flowstone starting to develop along the edge there. It's got kind of that popcorn look. Obviously this section is concerning to the miners because you see they've got this lagging all along here. Looks like we're getting into a more quartzy section up here, which is cool. Interesting formation there. Yes, there is a lot more quartz in here. It's hard to tell, but underneath the flowstone there, there's a fair amount of quartz. And you can especially see it here and along there. You see how it's interesting to see how the timbers were, uh, those wedges were jammed in behind the timbers to put even more, uh, make it even more tight less space for the rock to give. Okay, looks like we have a stope to the right. Running up there. I'll take a closer look in a second. Just want to show you the quartz vein. To my right here. That's all quartz. And you can see where pieces of it have broken off and landed at my feet here. The attic continues to the right, around that way. Now looking up, this stoke continues quite a way. You see that? That's 40 feet or more up. And what's interesting is you have this big slab right here and they carved out maybe a foot and a half underneath it. Let me get a better look at that. So the slab is about a foot and a half there. It narrows down to maybe four or five inches right there. And yet somehow they extended it up, gosh, four or five feet. I don't know if they were just barring that down or what. That's all quartz. I don't know how they got that out. That's crazy. I mean, the only thing that would fit in there would be a bar. That's pretty wild. Directly overhead, you see the quartz and the iron, which again, like I said, is a good indicator for gold. So I'm not surprised they stoked out this section pretty well. Considering the size of this massive slab here, that extends all the way over those timbers and of course up through that tiny crack as well. It's amazing that that timber is supporting all of that. Okay. I'm very curious what else might be back here. More quartz vein action there. And on, on the top. Nice fat blob of quartz on the rib here. This is starting to go. Those timbers are failing and dumped all this quartz material here. A better look at it. Just dumping all that down. Uh oh. I think this may be it. That's an ugly collapse. I'm not surprised. 
All this other stuff is failing. I'll get a better look in a minute. I just want to see what's here. I'm going to climb up a bit. Okay, see how this is all fragmented and starting to slab off? That's what's bringing down these timbers. These slabs are fracturing and smashing the timbers here. They tried to support this one, but you can see it failed. Or is in the process of failing, I should say. Behind me. Again, this is all ridden with quartz, so the temptation is there, I'm sure, for the miners to go after this. Here's a good look at a slab breaking off. Of course, I came in on the section there. This is what was over my head. Big slab breaking off here. I just climbed up on that pile of debris and was looking at that upper section from that vantage point. This is where I came in. Got a big chain on this post right here. Not sure what that would have been used for. This is a section I was, I said, didn't look so hot, and I think my assessment was correct. Down my knee now, and that is caved to the top. You see this cable wrapped around the rock right here? It almost looks as if they were trying to pull that out. The cable bends and loops around here, and I'm wondering if they were attempting to clear this blockage unsuccessfully from the looks of it. See the timbers are all saturated. That's actually not as bad as if they're just damp. When they're damp, they rot the most quickly. When they're pretty saturated like this, they tend to last a bit longer, but obviously not as long as the dry, as in the dry desert mines in Nevada. There is some good quartz back there. That's for sure. Makes me wonder what else is there, but unfortunately we won't be finding out today. We have the house on the hill, of course. And if you'll recall, we have the attic just below and the road we came in on. And call me crazy, but I think this may have been a blacksmith shop here. That hood right there is what I would expect from a blacksmith shop. See the stack running up. And the metally bits that are around here are blacksmith-esque from what I've seen at other abandoned mines. I just noticed the other pipe right there. See that? The end sticking in the ground and then something running up. Up in the trees to nowhere, apparently. Anyway, back to the presumed blacksmith shop, you can see it has this concrete foundation running back to those barrels there. So again, call me crazy, but I suspect that's what that was. And an operation like this would undoubtedly have had at least some blacksmithing capability.